Hello and welcome back to Gwendolyn's Scouting Adventure. If you are new here, my name is Gwendolyn. I am a life scout in Scouts BSA and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today's topic, we will be talking about how to wear your uniform the proper way and proper patch placement on the uniform. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get into today's video. So there's no real good place to begin whenever you're talking about proper patch placement on your uniform, um, but we're just gonna go ahead and dive in. Whenever you first buy your uniform, you're going to have at least the purple world crest probably already on the uniform. Um, but what you can buy in addition is the Scouts BSA um, anniversary um, outer ring patch. And these are really interchangeable. You can get this one that is official Scouts BSA. You can get non-official ones on different scouting websites. Also, if you achieve the Messengers of Peace Award, then you actually get an outer ring um, crest patch. It actually says Messengers of Peace and it has a cute little dove on it. And it's so noticeable. And whenever you see it, you know what award it is for and I just cannot wait to get that award. Um, that is a goal of mine. So both youth and adults can get the Messengers of Peace Award. So you should definitely look into it because it's a great award. But this is the youth religious emblem. And I believe this is the only knot a youth can wear. I know whenever a youth, say they're 17, they're an Arab light, they're an Eagle Scout, and they have their youth religious knot emblem, then when they transfer to an adult and they get their adult uniform, then they will have automatically three knots to start off with because the youth um, religious emblem transfers to the adult. If you earned it as a youth, you get your Eagle Scout knot and then your Arrow of Light knot. So you can't wear those two knots as a youth, I don't think, because you have the Arrow of Light patch and goes underneath your rank, which I will show later in the video. And you also wear your Eagle rank patch when you have that award. So there wouldn't really be um, a need to have the knots on a youth's uniform. So that's why I only think that you can only wear the religious emblem on your uniform, but I might be wrong. So I've got ahead and brought y'all down a little bit um, just for patch viewing. And so moving on to your right pocket flap. Patches. Over here, I have an order of the arrow big old pocket flap patch right here just because it's really pretty and I love it. And I also have my little arrow of light, I mean arrow of light, my order of the arrow um, dangle. And this is normally, this is for scouts and parents, this little order of the arrow dangle pin. I know it's hard to see on the pocket, but um, it is red and white striped, and then there is a little metal arrow that hangs at the bottom right here. And you normally wear this as a youth if you are in OA and if you are not wearing your Order of the Arrow sash. So like if you're wearing your merit badge sash, you can wear this so that people know, oh, they're in OA. It's kind of anticlimactic, I guess, to wear it on this side because your merit badge sash actually covers up this pocket area because it doesn't cover up your rank pocket. Anyways, moving on, you obviously put your rank patch on your left pocket um, underneath the pocket flap and you put your knots right above the pocket flap. And what I was going to say earlier was, BSA does recommend that their adult leaders, they limit themselves to nine knots on a uniform at a time. Um, the max amount is nine knot, knots that adults can wear and what they recommend and what they ask. So you get to pick and choose which knots you wanna display on your uniform, choose wisely if you have over nine because on the left shoulder, you display your council area patch, your unit number, your troop position, and underneath your troop position, you can choose to display either the trained patch or the NYLT patch. I will, I've ordered an NYLT patch and I'm just waiting to have it switched out um, so that my dad can wear the trained patch on his uniform. So 
we're doing a little switcheroo right there. This little dangle thing, this isn't official BSA uniform. This is just something that I made out of paracord, put a keychain on it, and then these are little trinkets that my troop hands out every time you go to either a summer camp or a big event that the troop goes to. Um, we have a leader that does cool wood designs, so he always does those for us. So why not wear it? Um, moving on to the right shoulder, you have the American flag displayed at the top, and this normally comes on the uniform already sewn along with the purple world crest. You put your patrol patch underneath the American flag, and then at towards the bottom, um, right above the sleeve seam right here, you can put your troops JTE status for that year. Um, if your troop does JTE, if they don't, you should look into it. That's normally what the committee handles um, for the troop unit, but it's really cool. And who doesn't love to have another patch displayed on their uniform? Um, we all know our loops. We wear the forest green loops on our epaulets up here. Um, I have a few little pins right here. This one I got from a certain BSA museum in Colorado. So that was fun. Um, and then this one I just got from my local scout shop. It is the American flag paired with the BSA flag. So it's technically not official uniform to have little pins on your collars, but yeah. Anyways, um, I also have right here, these are my Twin Arrows beads. Um, these are what I received at graduation for going to Twin Arrows slash NYLT, which if you don't know, National Youth Leadership Training, they normally do three courses in a year. They do winter course, spring course, and summer course. Um, I went to winter course in 2020 and it was very cold um, for half of the week. The other half was very warm. So I got best of both worlds, but we ended off on a cold and rainy note, but that's okay because I still graduated. Um, I still got my beads and I am still NYLT trained. So that's awesome. If you don't know what NYLT is, you should definitely look into it. After you go, after you get your beads, you should go back and staff an NYLT because then one of these beads turns gold. So that's not the only reason you should staff, but it's definitely um, a high point and a little extra award that you get to display on your uniform. World crest, not rank, patch choice over here. Um, oh, I have the National Outdoor Achievement Award of Camping. Let me go and get that real quick. Okay, so I ran and got my little patch box that I keep all my unsewn patches in. And I actually already just talked about this, but I wasn't recording. So we're gonna talk about this again, take two. So this is the National Outdoor Achievement Award, and this is my camping strip, and it would be displayed and sewn on like so, above the Scouts BSA embroidery right here and right across from the World Crest on my left side. So this is how it would look. I'm super excited to have this sewn on. And if you want to know how to get this award, it's the Camping Merit Badge, First Class Rank Cooking Merit Badge, I believe one more Merit Badge, I can't remember off the top of my head, and at least 25 nights of camping. So every additional 25 nights of camping that you get after achieving this award, you get to put on a gold device. And then after an additional 100 nights of camping, you get a silver device to put on here. So it's really cool. Um, and it's just more bling for your uniform. And if you want to look up how the full he hexagon looks all filled in with all of the different outdoor awards, they have one for camping, aquatics, hiking, horseback riding, um, I believe maybe climbing or backpacking. They have one for conservation. And then they have one more that I cannot remember. There are six different awards so you fill it up, Every, each patch goes somewhere special um, to make it look uniform. And then the sixth one is conservation, it would, and it would actually go underneath on its own, just right there. So yeah, that's really cool. That's this award. And this was the little NYLT patch strip that I was talking about that will go right underneath here. 
let's move on to talking about the merit badge sash and the order of the arrow sash and when and when not to wear them i am still currently sitting down so it looks a little wonky and i am kind of cut off right here but that's okay so this is how the merit badge sash is worn you hang it from your right shoulder and it goes across your body and it does not cover up the rank patch it crosses your body just below the rank patch and then ends at your hip or your waist right down here on the side so you display your merit badges on the front my mom leaves a little bit of room up here just um to give it some space you know because i have a little bsa pin thing that i like to pin it through my epaulet with to make it stay put because it does definitely move around a lot if it is not secured down to your uniform um so yeah and i actually have my camping merit badge but it just needs sewn on so yeah we're getting there <laughs> growing very quickly in merit badges to get eagle in time front back here you can honestly display whichever patches you want to such as patches that you cannot display on your troop uniform so let's run down that list really quickly tote and chip and fireman chip are first on the list those patches you technically are not supposed to display them as a pocket flat patch right here i know they look like pocket flat patches i don't know why they designed them like that but they look like it some people put it over here on their right pocket flap that is technically not uniform so great place to put them on the back of your merit badge sash if you want to display them if you don't you can just put them on your box or just don't get the patch have the little certificate card i like to have patches because i'm kind of a patch hoarder in a way but so i displayed those on the back of my merit badge sash then moving down i have a little scoro patch right here from 2020 i have my summer camp patches right here um, I have a high adventure base patch here from Summit Bechtel Reserve, and it's super shiny and pretty, and I love it. Um, then I have a Philmont patch right here, another Scoro, and then um, an Ordeal patch that I got. And then this is a special NYLT Twin Arrows trained patch. I had my Twin Arrows patch displayed right here underneath the pocket flap, and it looked really nice, really clean, really sleek. I have the back of my merit badge sash full. It is full. So I love it. Um, like I said, you can choose what to display on your merit badge sash, what not to display, um, and all that good stuff. Merit badge sashes are normally worn at courts of honor. If you do not know what a court of honor is, it is an award ceremony that is held normally twice a year by your troop. And it is just... A fun family event where um, your family can come see what you have achieved in the past six months, see you get your awards, your merit badge recognition, your rank recognition, the whole shebang, any extra awards like maybe Messengers of Peace or World or National Outdoor Achievement Award or World Conservation Award, all those cool fun awards that are extras. Um, it's just a really great event to go to see what you've earned, get recognized, have a fun time. So that is normally when merit badges are worn during troop events such as Court of Honor. Um, and whatever other fundraising ac activity your troop might be doing where they want you to be in full field class A uniform, um, it's really troop discretion when they want you to wear your merit badge sash either at meetings or at special events that you're at where you're um, advertising scouts and trying to get recruits. Moving on to the Order of the Arrow sash. Um, this is worn, well, if you're in OA, you know how it's worn. You, it goes through the epaulet and then it goes across your body, pins at the hip, and it is worn like the Mare Badge sash. These two sashes, they cannot be worn together at a court of honor. I am sorry, I know it's disappointing to me too. I wish I could wear everything that I've achieved in my scouting adventure so far, but we can't. It's not BSA policy to wear your merit badge sash and then your OA sash on top. That's not BSA policy. Also, you cannot wear your OA sash and then tuck in your merit badge sash into your pant pocket to where it's displayed um, off of your belt. That is also not per BSA policy um, and is technically not uniform. So you get to choose 
one or the other, which one to wear at what meetings. Normally, OA sashes are only worn at Order of the Arrow events, such as induction weekends, any other OA campout weekend, and your Order of the Arrow elections for your troop or your call-out ceremonies. So that is normally when OA members in your unit will wear their OA sashes if there is a special Order of the Arrow related event going on. So that's normally the only time that OA wants you to wear your sash. Other than that, um, don't wear it to just a regular meeting because this is, it is a special recognition to wear your Order of the Arrow sash and you should save it for special Order of the Arrow events only. I accidentally skipped over Arrow of Light and Recruiter patch placement. I will show y'all what the patches look like. Over here is the Arrow of Light patch. Over here is the Recruiter patch. That's what they look like. Arrow of Light patch, you will normally put it right underneath the seam that comes across the pocket. You will put it right underneath that seam and you will display the Arrow of Light patch right there. Crossed over from Cub to your troop, you will display your patch right under here, underneath where your rank goes. Um, if you have recruited someone to your troop, you will display your recruiter patch over here underneath the pocket seam um, as well. So just straight across from each other. Whenever it comes to your unit number, um, if you are a founder, you put the founder bar underneath your unit number. If you if your unit has been around for 25, 10, 15, 50 years, you display your veterans bar above your unit number and you can actually custom order, special order, unit patches that have the veteran year above them displayed as one big patch. And then you can put your founder bar underneath. It is customary for troops to have, um, all troops to have some sort of a neckerchief. Um, how you wear them, when you wear them is completely up to your unit. Um, my troop unit, we do not wear our neckerchiefs to our meetings. We normally only wear them to special events, um, such as courts of honor. Um, I wear mine to fundraisers we do or special scouting activities we do. You are allowed to wear your neckerchief and your NYLT TA beads at the same time. How I do mine is I put my neckerchief on first and then I put my TA beads on over it and they just kind of hang together. I'll loosen this TA diamond to where the woggle is securing my neckerchief up here and where this is just kind of hanging loosely like so. A little bit of extra information. Women's cut uniforms, there are special women cut ones where you do not have to tuck in. It is not BSA policy for females in Scouts BSA to tuck in. That is not policy. Now, my troop, we tuck in um, because that is just our leader's philosophy and mindset, which is completely fine. It, it's not BSA policy, so do not feel pressured to tuck in if you are a female and you do not want to tuck in for whatever reason. It is totally fine not to. It's not policy and it doesn't it doesn't mean you're out of uniform. If you're wearing your shirt the right way, your patches are on properly, you're wearing your scout pants and you have a belt on and you're untucked, you're fine. The main objective of wearing the Scouts VSA uniform is to look neat. As long as you look neat and tidy, that's all that matters. So just a little tidbit right there. I wanted to be sure to include that in this video. Um, just if anyone was wondering or had any questions on that, there you go. I hope y'all enjoyed. I hope y'all learned something or you just got to know me a little bit better. Um, and yeah, I will see you guys in my next scouting adventure video. Stay tuned and see you then. Bye-bye.